Hey there, I've got this DVD and I want to watch it. I'm not at home. How do we do that? Hey there, this is Tom with Tom's Tech Show. And now that I got my autofocus fixed, it was going crazy. So I just restarted the video. But I've, I've got a DVD here and everybody knows how to, well, many people know how to get a DVD onto your computer and then rip it so that you can, you can watch it. I may do another video of that. Um, just a quick overview of what I do is I use a program here called uh, Make MKV and it pulls the video off the drive, puts it on the hard drive. And then I use Handbrake to uh, rip it down to a smaller size. And then I take that and place it on my NAS, which has a media server on it. And that's how I use, if I click Plex here, that's built into the media server. Um, there then that's how I get and watch so this DVD here is that movie that's displaying here so um, if I'm at home there's not really an issue of how to connect you know I just load an app on my Roku and then the Plex you know system just goes off and finds it and I can click play and play the movie and stuff on my TV or on my laptop so if I'm not at home what do I need to do how do I get that media from there to wherever I am. Like if I'm at a hotel um, or at a friend's house and they say, hey, I want to watch this. Um, really the easiest way and probably the best way to do this, I mean, you can put your media streamer right on the, the internet, forward ports into it, and just go there and watch things directly from the system. But that might uh, cause, you know, DMCA to suddenly light up and say, oh, you're you're streaming or watching movies that you don't own. I don't hear this channel. I do not advocate, of course, pirating or taking or any other kind of things. Only rip the DVDs that you own. I think there was a legal decision that said if you have a DVD, you can definitely make a backup copy of that just for your own personal and private use. Um, that being said, um, so this is just the standard regular edition of Plex. I haven't upgraded or done anything crazy. Um, so what we can do is the NAS that I use has a VPN server. So that allows me to remote and connect into this NAS from outside my network. So if you're going to someone else's house, you'll either need to bring a tablet or a laptop that can VPN in, because not many TVs, I don't know if there's any TVs, maybe an Android TV, that an Android TV that might have the capability to VPN into into something but typically more likely you're going to need um, a laptop uh, or a tablet now you can get an HDMI cable connector to go with your uh, MacBook or iPad or whatever and use that um, in order to connect in and be able to do that um, there is a way if you are have some place that you're going to be Often you can both upgrade to specific um, network routers that allow you to maintain a constant connection between the two and set up um, a peering tunnel, an IPsec tunnel between the two locations, and then that would always be connected and then you could always watch, um, watch something like it's a family member or something and you're always over there watching their kids or doing something like that. Then you can do that, upgrade to a different router that enables that constant connection. But here we're just gonna use this OpenVPN that's built into um, the uh, Synology NAS. Synology NASs are great. Um, if you don't have one that you can do so many things with them, they're web servers, they're media servers. Like this one is a Plex server. So I have Plex actually loaded on here and it can do many Plexy things. Um, but one thing you are going to need and that is um, upload speed. So um, VPNs often take like maybe 30%, maybe even 40% sometimes of your bandwidth away just to handle the, the, the communication between you and the other end. It ha it's having to do handshakes, it's having to you know, encrypt the traffic that's going over the tunnel um, that's between you and your destination. So remember that is going on. So if you have you know, a DSL connection with a very low upload speed, because if you're watching things remotely, right, you're going to be um, needing upload speed. You're taking things out of your house. If you have a DSL connection that has like a one meg upload, 
Um, you're probably not going to be able to do this very well. Um, I'm on my in my back office here, and um, I'm getting 70 down and uh, seven or so, maybe six or seven up. Um, if I'm from the front of the house, uh, directly connected to the router, it's actually 200 down and 10 up. So that's where I would be bringing the traffic from. Here, I'm connected through. Uh, house wiring, networking, and uh, multiple switches and other different things to get <laughs> up to the front of the house. But um, So you would definitely need upload speed. So that would be whatever level you need to buy up into in order to be able to get that network up. Like if you're going to be streaming something that's you know needs two and a half meg uh, per second to stream and you only have a one meg upload connection, you're either going to have to sample that video down and rip it down, which is what Plex can do. Uh, make a smaller version of it and then stream the smaller version but if you do that then you're going to be losing quality so everything that you're trying to do is going to be geared and triggered off of this upload speed what is that upload speed how how you know that's going to be your limiting factor most often in order to get there so we set up some type of vpn service um, if you have a plex uh, box we can also use um, uh, OpenVPN, and I'll make a video about how to set OpenVPN up. Um, the the free version of OP, OpenVPN allows two uh, connections to use as kind of a demo uh, kind of thing, and that allows you to set that up on your a computer at your house or your network or somewhere. It's a, a, a little virtual box uh, thing that you can set up and be able to connect in and use resources on your network. I use this for many uh, businesses so that they can get into their networks and do that remotely instead of opening the RDP connection uh, and putting that public on the internet, we use OpenVPN in order to be able to have users connect in and use systems in a network because you never want to put your you know, RDP, of course, um, on the network or on the internet because that's that's just really problematic. I mean, you can, you, you could do that. You could like RDP into your computer and then try and watch the video over RDP, but that would be a little, a little jumpy. Or if you put RDP directly on the internet, which I do not recommend, then you could want RDP into the box and use a computer, laptop plugged into a TV kind of thing in order to do that. But um, if you have the Plex app and on your iPad and a cable that plugs your iPad into, um, a TV, the HDMI you know, of a TV, that's probably the best way. Um, there is an app, I use the, um, the OpenVPN app that's um, on, on iPad that works really well, connects right in, able to do anything you need to do, you know, connecting to resources and stuff over uh, your network into your home. Uh, you can do other things like print, you can connect to your other computers, you can manage your router, do all things over this VPN connection. So it's actually pretty handy to have. Um, I guess I will make a video about that um, using OpenVPN and setting that up. Adding adding a free SSL, you can add a free SSL certificate to it, but that you have to redo it every 90 days. So it's pretty easy, but um, that's one way to do it. Um, so that's how I access media. Um, from my uh, Plex server when I'm away from home. I've mean, actually done this. We've been in in Mexico and been able to you know dial in and connect in and be able to do things um, and watch TV and everything else from the hotel. Watch our own media, you know, from the hotel. I mean, especially when you're in Mexico, all the channels are in either Spanish or Chinese, which makes no sense. I guess there were Japanese and and Spanish, so I think there was one English channel when we were in Mexico, so that was kind of weird. But anyway, so we were able to connect in and watch all of our own movies and, and, and everything else over the hotel Wi-Fi because I had VPN'd in to our house. So that made it pretty easy to do. All right, well, there you go. That's how I do it and how I connect and get everything in there. So other videos coming. Thanks for watching and thanks everybody so much for subscribing. I do appreciate it. Take care.